The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HSS, has issued new guidance to expand access to specialty care for Medicaid. This allows state programs to directly reimburse specialists for consultations requested by primary care providers, even if the patient is not present. So my first question is that how do you see the CMS Innovation Center's updated strategy supporting value-based specialty care? in improving patient outcomes and care coordination? I think it provides more access. Um, so, you know, I, I think it does a few things. And one of the things that I know uh, that we were challenged with, uh, both working at the health plan as well as uh, being part of a risk-bearing medical group, um, was being able to pay the specialty or pay the specialist appropriately um, but then also to uh, make sure that, you know, you were controlling for cost of care. And so um, only referring patients or referring patients uh, as appropriate. Um, and so uh, not overburdening specialists. And so one of the things that um, that I think that the new program does is it's a few things. It it potentially provides the opportunity to pay specialists on par for their services. And I think that that's one of the challenges um, with fee for service. Uh, they often are, are able to charge um, a greater premium for their services. And so I think that that would need to be balanced in value-based care, um, but you would also uh, have a shift um, uh, to the potential for uh, quantity. And I think that that too, though, would need to be balanced um, because you would want to make sure that you're not over referring. And I think that uh, that we've seen a lot of that in the past. Um, so making sure to use the primary care office appropriately, uh, as opposed to referring everything out, um, but then also to being able to place those referrals that are important. And so how does that improve patient care? It allows patients to get to see the specialists that they need to see. Um, you know, when they need to see them. Um, and I, you know, I think that that's important because I think that there are, you know, uh, there are some things um, and sometimes uh, healthcare gets slowed down in that whole authorization referral process. And so this way it gives you an opportunity um, to engage more specialists, to give them an opportunity to see more patients, but to see the patients that are important for them to see. Okay, thank you so much for your input, doctor. Uh, so my second question is related to this as well, that what do you, since you've already mentioned that, you know, uh, some of the challenges, but wanted to know what are the potential benefits and challenges of CMS's approach to incentivize uh, primary care providers to engage more with specialists through new models and programs? Um, so I think the, you know, the benefits to engage with them more is to have, is to foster relationships. I know uh, working on the medical group side, one of the complaints um, that I often heard was that they weren't getting information back. And so a lot of times they, they weren't aware of, you know, what was going on uh, with their patients. And so I think that one of the challenges is that lack of information or that lack of uh, collaboration and I think the benefit would be that you would have greater opportunity um, to be connected in that patient's care. So you would have more, um, I guess you would say longitudinal throughput uh, into how that patient was being cared for. Um, the other thing though, too, I think is, you know, for the from the standpoint of the care of the patient is that you would have better access. You know, we, we've heard of um, and I know I've experienced it where you make an appointment with a specialist and it might be four, six months before you get in, sometimes longer. And I think that uh, if the primary care physician is working closely with the specialist, there's a couple of things that are happening there. Um, one, they have a relationship so that when a patient is referred, those patients that need to be in, you know, because of their situation, but need to be in sooner, could potentially be seen sooner. Um, than not. And then also too, I think that there's an opportunity to determine what's appropriate uh, for referral to the specialist. And I'll share with you an example um, from a group that I had worked with uh, a couple of years ago. Um, we found that uh, primary care, primary care uh, physicians 
were recommending um, patients that needed uh, a, a biopsy, a basic biopsy that could have been done in the primary care office, but they were referring it out to dermatologists. Well, when you do those types of things, and those are types of procedures that can be done in office, there's a few things that happen there. One is if they're always going to the dermatologist, you often have then the dermatologist schedule getting overwhelmed uh, where they're seeing patients that maybe they don't necessarily need to see. And those patients are waiting for care and patients say that need to get in um, because they have a serious issue, can't. And so it slows down patient care. I think the patient gets frustrated uh, you know, the, the specialists are frustrated because they're not able to see the patients that they need to see. But then also, too, you take away opportunities um, for potential revenue from the primary care office, too, because if the primary care physician can do those basic biopsies, it gives them an opportunity, right, to expand their um, their practice and not, not inappropriately, um, but gives them an opportunity um, to, you know, be able to perform services that again, are appropriate for a primary care office, um, would, would keep things at the primary care level uh, for cases that don't necessarily need to be referred out. So the benefits, I think, would be greater collaboration in ways that are meaningful and impactful, um, not only from the revenue standpoint, um, but then also to, um, most importantly, from a patient care standpoint, um, because I think the challenge in the past was, you know, knowing who to refer, how to refer, um, and, uh, you know, and, and what was appropriate. And unfortunately, um, you know, we're limited in resources in this country when it comes to uh, clinicians. And so I think that this is one way um, to make sure to protect, um, you know, any specialist or primary care office, right? Making sure to manage, um, because the, the whole thing about that quintuple aim is providing the right care uh, in the right setting. And I think that, um, you know, that this directive uh, really advances that. Thank you, doctor. I'm just going to add a further question to it. Do you think that this is going to reduce the clinical burnout as well? I think it could. I think that it would provide uh, additional opportunities because knowing, talking to my physician friends, my primary care physician friends, I think that it provides them opportunities to do and see other things. Um, and then also to uh, when I talk to clinicians um, and physicians, they always tell me uh, their biggest lament is that they went to school, right, to practice medicine, that they truly wanted to help people. And I think that it would give them, if you have people practicing to top of license um, and seeing the patients that they need to see, uh, you know, I think that reduces burnout because it makes sure that, again, you're seeing the patients that you're supposed to see. And so, um, going back to that point I made about, you know, what, what friends of mine have told me and their feelings about it um, is that, again, they went to school to practice medicine because they want to help people. And so it gives them the opportunity to see the people um, that they, they really need to see, uh, that really need their help and need their treatment. And I think that goes for the specialists as well, um, that they're seeing those patients uh, that they need to see so that they can use their skills um, again, and their knowledge uh, to top of license. Um, and so I do think that, that, you know, that that provides that. And then also too, you know, it's about uh, quality of visit as opposed to quantity. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, fee-for-service drives quantity um, because the more patients you see, uh, the more you're um, compensated uh, where, you know, you have a, a, a mind shift, a paradigm shift to, you um, providing care and really managing that care. And that's the thing that I think that value-based care does is that it places an emphasis on quality uh, versus quantity. Um, so, uh, you know, so definitely think um, that it will go a long way in improving uh, physician burnout or ameliorating uh, physician burnout. Thank you, doctor. So adding to that, I'm going to my next question is that how effective do you think that fi creating financial incentives for specialists to affiliate with population-based models will be in improving care coordination and reducing unnecessary costs? I think creating incentives will be really important. And I think understanding uh, what appropriate incentives are. You know, um, like I mentioned, when I speak to a lot of physicians and I'm 
currently doing a study and interviewing folks about what draws them to medicine and what motivates them. And, you know, what they tell me again is that, that um, wanting to help patients. But I think that, 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 you know, that that's important and that should be primary. But I think that one of the ways that we can demonstrate uh, appreciation for the care that our physicians are providing um, is through incentives. And, you know, just thinking about specialty care um, and for the, you know, the, um, the skill that they're being asked, you know, to, uh, to demonstrate and the years that they've gone to school, um, I think that, you know, incentives are important. Uh, people should be paid appropriately and they should be paid for the work that they're doing. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, that again, that that'll be important, that it's not enough to, um, rely on uh, martyrdom, if you will, you know, of, oh, you want to do this because, because again, um, these are selfless individuals that have given a lot of time uh, and a lot of dedication, right, to study and practice medicine. Uh, and, and I think that, um, you know, that motivation, again, um, may be enough for them. Uh, but truly, if we want to take care of you know, take care of our physicians, that we need to incent them appropriately. Um, because it is, uh, I think it's a very difficult job, especially in, in today's world. Um, it's it's not as well paid as it once was, um, or at least what it was thought. Uh, it requires a lot of work. There's a lot of liability. There's a lot of pressure and stress. And uh, I think we need to take care of the people um, that we rely on the most to keep us happy and healthy. And so, uh, again, you know, long, long way to answer, um, but absolutely um, think incentives uh, will be important and the right incentives. They don't all have to be monetary. I think even just shifting workload um, will be important. Uh, but I think one of the easiest ways to demonstrate your appreciation uh, is through appropriate incentives, the ones that are enough to motivate. Do you, uh, so Peter talked about, do you think that this is going to uh, give them an, enough incentive to join a population health model or, you know, support it? Like get um, a population-based model on board? You know, potentially. I think the, the lore of uh, being part of a population-based um, program is really getting to manage care. And I think that, you know, what I mentioned about being motivated, they went to school to help people. If you really see that as an opportunity, you know, value-based care and, and the emphasis on prevention and that paradigm shift of being proactive as opposed to the way much of medicine has been practiced in the past, uh, which has been reactive, um, you know, waiting until uh, something occurs and then responding. Um, I do think uh, that there's incentive there um, because you're appealing to right that that um, that desire to help people, uh, and so it really gives you an opportunity to be a part of that. And then also too, you're managing a larger population, so it does take a mind shift. Um, I think that for and this is something that I found in managing contracts and having these types of initial discussions with. Uh, with clinicians that we were trying to move from practicing fee for service to being a part of a value-based system. And it takes some time. It's not something that comes overnight. And so it's it's that waiting, right? It's you don't have the instant gratification of someone came to your office, they saw you today, and now they're going to pay you money. Not that it's that easy. I'm not saying that it is. I know claims and other things take forever to get paid. Um, however, you know, you have the opportunity to really focus on the health and wealth of that population. And like I said, you know, motivated um, to provide care and to keep people healthy and to see the people that are, that are you know, necessary or that you need to see. Um, but then again, uh, you know, you can be compensated at a greater level because again, the emphasis goes away from the individual per se, um, if that makes sense, to that greater population. Not that you're not focusing on all the people within that population, um, but I think when we think about the, you know, the, the financial ties, um, that, you know, that that's where the focus shifts. 
uh, is, uh, is it's not waiting for someone to come in. And if you don't fill your nine o'clock spot, you're not getting paid. Um, but rather, uh, if someone doesn't come in, right, so somewhat of capitation, but you still need to see people um, because you need to still be managing their health. Um, but you have an opportunity to be paid on that, that population. You don't necessarily have to see them, but you see the folks that need to be seen um, in, you know, uh, to an appropriate um, or in an appropriate way, right? So someone might require more visits within a month or within a given year than someone else. Someone might provide or might need more care than another, uh, but but the incentives are driven to be at that population level. Um, so some of those uh, nuances between what's required of care are somewhat smoothed out, if that makes sense, uh, so that the patients that you're not always having to see, um, you're still, you know, you're you're not again, you're not waiting around to fill that, you know, that nine o'clock spot. Um, and making sure that, you know, that someone comes in. Thank you, doctor. That was really informative.